All right, today in the shop, we are working on a uh, D30 series uh, diaphragm pump. And I'm going to show you actually how to change the diaphragm and the uh, O-rings on it in case you're having a leak or you're having pressure problems or whatever. Uh, this is the unit right here. This is mounted onto uh, the sprayer here. And this is the pump. And the diaphragm kit here is... Uh, that's the kit right there, 9910-1724, I guess that's the number, but there's also that COD number up there. But anyway, inside of here, you got your uh, two diaphragms down here, you got your air accumulator, which goes up top there. Uh, these diaphragms basically go here, you got four bolts here, um, this is going to go inside of there, and then there's another one on the uh, back side back here that's got to come off. And in that kit also comes some O-rings and such, which you're going to find underneath um, of this head here. So we need to remove this also. But I'm going to show you how to uh, do all that in case you're having a leak or, you know, uh, sometimes these things leak here from the seals or you're just having some pressure problems or whatever. Um, but I did uh, loosen some things just to speed up the video. So first thing obviously you want to do is you want to loosen up these. They just turn to the left. You pull this hose off. You'll have another hose over here, which you want to turn to the left. You want to pull that off. And you're going to have up here, I forget what size socket this was. This was a uh, 17 millimeter up here. You're going to have a nut here in the front. And then in the back... On the back side, there will be another one back here. They're already loosened up. And you're going to have a hose coming around the back. Um, this one you can take off last because sometimes these are real tight to pull off. And once we uh, pull this head up here, we'll be able to actually pull this whole assembly out to us and get that hose off a little easier. But now that these two bolts are removed, this typically slides right up. They will feel a little bit tight. Uh, what you can do is get yourself, and remember, this is plastic, so be careful. Get yourself a little uh, screwdriver and just kind of pry up on it a little bit and then go around to the back side and try to get underneath of it there and pry up a little bit. And you might be able to uh, pull that straight up just like that. And that assembly will come off there. And you should be able to pull it to you now, way out here. See, I got it all the way out the machine now. So now it'll be a little bit easier to get this hose off of here. And that's only if you need to uh, pull this hose off. For what we're doing today, we don't need to take this hose off. Um, but if you look underneath here of the head, you will have an O-ring on this side, which is typically, you know, I have a little bit of long nails right now. I need to trim them, but it's not coming up. I can get a pick tool and I can pull that O-ring up there. And then on down here on the same side, there's going to be another one. There's not, there's not one here, not one there. But if you look up here, you will see one right here. And over here, you'll see one right there. And those are these O-rings that come in the bag there. All right, so we'll get a pick. I'll pull those up and we can replace those. But since I'm under here already, I am going to cover up these ports here and I am going to clean up this pump a little bit. I'm going to get um, my air hose and kind of blow all this off. It's not, you know, you're not all under here that often. So while you're under here, we'll just clean it out. So I got my surface all cleaned up pretty good. And now I'm just going to take a pick and... You want to be careful you don't if you know you don't want to take a screwdriver you could but if you slip you could go right through this check valve right here and this is where your check valves are you'll feel it it's, it's going up and down there um, if you're having a problem with your check valves I will show you how they come out but just get a pick that'll pull your o-rings right up and you're gonna do the same thing for that o-ring in the back and these o-rings right here just put the pick on them pull them right up but if you're doing your uh, check valves this is where they are, right here. And uh, sometimes these do get stuck. And an easy way to get them out is you just push down on a check valve with your finger a little bit. And put some pressure with your finger and just pull straight up. Um, and if you're having some problems with pressure and stuff like that, sometimes these go bad. They're really inexpensive. Uh, but you just want to make sure that this is going up. 
and down pretty freely. It's not stuck down. It's not stuck up. And this one seems to be okay. And they just pop back in there. So we don't need to uh, change that one. But our O-ring is out. So we can go ahead and just pop our new O-ring right in there, which is self-explanatory. Take it out of the wrapper and push it right back down in the track. Just like that. And do the same thing with the one back there and the two on here. All right, got all my O-rings in. My check valves are good. So now we can proceed to the uh, air accumulator here. And that would be this little guy here. Kind of looks like a toilet plunger. And we are going to use a half inch and remove all these bolts around the top. Once all your bolts are loosened, you can kind of just pull your bolts out. Um, sometimes these are going to be a little bit stuck on there. You may need to get a little screwdriver um, in there or a little punch and just kind of tap lightly to start prying this up. And then at some point, it will just come off just like that. All right, we can set that aside. And you can see right underneath of this, we have our air accumulator diaphragm there. And just kind of make sure that they do fit. Size them up together. Just flip it upside down and make sure it's the same size. Which it is. And uh, you can see sometimes this gets a lot of junk in here. Um, so I'm going to take a rag. Go ahead and clean all this out. And then this just pops back in like that. And you put your cover back on. Now that it's all clean... I'll just take this, and you'll see this little track here. Well, that's where this little groove is going to rest in there, and you're going to seat it down in that track. Make sure it's down there nice and firmly. It's not too hard. It typically just pops in there. You won't hear any snaps or anything like that, but it just seats down in there and put our cover back on. So this we are done with. We can just leave that there. We're going to move up here now. You're going to have these four three-quarter inch bolts, which I had already loosened. And we're going to go ahead and start pulling those out. And again, sometimes these are going to be stuck on there a little bit. You may have to get a little screwdriver or a little pry bar behind there. But be gentle. This piece is plastic. Um, you can see this one's loose already. It's going to want to come off. And under there will be our another diaphragm, which is held on by another nut. If I can get this off, I'm doing this with one hand here. There we go. And we can set this down there for a second. All right. And this is the other diaphragm here, which you see here. Remember, we got another one on the back side we still got to do. But right now, we got to remove this nut. And uh, it'll allow us to uh, pull this out and uh, remove this diaphragm. So let's do that now. And this is going to be a uh, three-quarter. Spin that out and put yourself a little rag down there because you are going to have a little bit of oil dripping out of there. And you can see that just pulls off just like that. All right. And you can see the oil dripping out. Now we will just probably need two hands for this. Oh, no, I don't. And you'll just pull that nut out of there just like that. But keep in mind the orientation of your diaphragm so you put it back on the right way now it's important to note when you're putting these on if you look at these it will say the word oil on the one side of these that's the side that you want facing in towards the uh towards the oil so look where it says oil and make sure that that side is facing in we will transfer it over to this one here and you want to push that bolt through the front goes in there a little snug so you want to push that through just like that now we can go ahead and line this back up here and tighten that back up it is back on so now we can proceed now we can put this back up here line it up and it's going to take a little pressure to push against that uh, i'm going to need both hands but you basically want to push against this hold it in place and start getting your nuts threaded in before you let go. So I put this one in the upper right corner first and the bottom left. Um, and I just kind of held it real tight and screwed these in as far as I could so that this wasn't pushing out anymore. 
screwed them in by hand. Now these two can pretty much just put in and then I'm going to go back with the socket and tighten them up. Now we have this seated back on. Um, one thing I forgot to mention when we had this off after we took that nut off and removed the diaphragm underneath that was the uh, piston sleeve. So if you were going to have to do any internal work with the piston and such like that, that piston sleeve pretty much just pulls out and you'll see your piston right there. You can clean out the inside. Um, uh, but we, we weren't going into that. We're just changing the diaphragms. But if you had to go deeper down behind that diaphragm is the sleeve. Just pull it right out of there and you're able to access the piston. Now you're going to do the same process on the other side back here. It's a little bit tighter if you still have the machine. You can see there's not a whole lot of space back here, but there's plenty of room to get a ratchet and a socket in there. So you should be just fine. Do the same thing on that side that you did on this side. All right, now that both sides are done, you can go ahead and put your top back on. And one of the problems you're going to have, which I just had, and I apologize if this screen is blurry. I'm getting oil all over my phone here. Um, when you're putting that up there, your check valves are going to want to fall out of the bottom. So you're going to have to uh, mess with them and keep them in there as long as, and along with the O-rings, make sure they don't pop out when you're sliding this back down on top. Now I'm going to have to put this check valve back in now. It just popped out. All right, so basically what I did as I was lowering this down, I kept one finger on that check valve that was sliding out until I couldn't hold my finger in there anymore. And then... I let go. Um, you got to make sure this is going down perfectly straight. And then it's going to hang up for a second. Just give it a little bump with your hand. And it should fall all the way down into place. All right. So now you can put those two, nut back, two nuts back on. And uh, connect all your hoses. And that's it. That's how you uh, do the check valves, the O-rings, and the diaphragms on your D30 series pump. And don't forget, you lost a little bit of oil when you were doing that. So uh, I don't know how much oil you lost. So I don't know how much to tell you to put back in. But uh, typically, these use a non-detergent 30-weight oil. But your model might be different. So always check your manual or uh, call your local uh, shop that's around town or a dealer or parts person that you deal with to get the correct uh, type of oil for yours. But ours, we use a typical 30-weight uh, non-detergent. And uh, that's it. That's how you do it, guys. So please hit subscribe below. Give me a like, and I'll see you on the next video.